became quite adept at bargain hunting. This is through years and years of being a cheapskate and wanting to get the best for my money. I get lots of comments asking me where I get my bargains, how I get my camera bargains and how you can too. So I thought I'd put all of my tips into one handy dandy video for you. And just a disclaimer, this is not sponsored by anyone. It's definitely not sponsored by any of the companies that I mentioned in this video. If you do any of these techniques yourself, be vigilant. There are scammers out, out there. There are silly people that want to rip people off. So just use common sense and constant vigilance. So what makes a bargain? I mean, how in the world of internet information at our fingertips do bargains even exist? Here is my philosophy on the matter. Bargains exist when there is a deficit of two things, either or both, a deficit of patience, or a deficit of knowledge. If you have either or both of those things, that's where bargains lie. An example of a deficit of knowledge is, I bought a bulk order of 28 cameras for 16 pounds, I think from a charity shop. They didn't have the knowledge to individually research the items and list them all separately. They benefited from a very quick solution. I benefited from an absolute bargain. Another example is a deficit of patience. For instance, there might be someone on Facebook Marketplace or Gumtree that wants to go to Benidorm with the lads and he wants to sell his camera immediately, quickly, so he can get his, his plane ticket booked. This is a deficit of patience. If you waited a little bit longer and haggled a little bit, that person would be able to get a better price for that product, but because they need the cash quickly, we benefit. So why am I telling you this? Well, I often see people look in camera shops for bargains and that's the one place on the planet where we do not have a deficit of patience or knowledge. The chances of finding an actual bargain in a camera shop with people who know their shit is so, so small. Lesson one, look for a lack of knowledge and a lack of patience. I don't think I've ever seen anyone talk about this little feature on eBay. It's not rocket science, but my goodness, it helps me a ton. When you search on eBay for a specific thing, you can also filter the results by recently sold. This tells you so much information. It shows you the average price of, of what this thing is that you're looking for, that it goes for. And it also shows you how scarce it is as well. If there's only been three sales in the last six months, then maybe it's worth paying a little bit more because there just isn't that many of this item on the used market. Conversely, if some silly bugger has got a camera up for like £1,099 and then you search and see that the last time it sold it was £68, literally happened, with this monstrosity of a camera, the, <laughs> the Lumix CM1, I think it's the first camera Android hybrid ever made, and I really wanted one and I got one for £100. Now, I bought this by checking the sold price. The last one that sold was £68, but it was over a month ago, so there's not many on the market. There's one online for £1,099, and I just think, like, that's silly. They're playing silly buggers. So for me, knowing it was quite scarce and knowing that it didn't crop up very often, £100 seemed not a world apart from the previous sales and not a rip-off. I'm relating this back to my bargain motto. This shows you very quickly who's listed these items with no knowledge and no patience. Because if that price is stupidly low, they haven't took five minutes to research the going price. They've just gone, oh, this is an old camera. Let's stick it on for a tenner. And then Emily buys it. So more around eBay will probably work for other auction sites as well. I know not everybody likes eBay, but you know, it, it's, it is what it is. There are two games that I like to play on eBay. They are called Ending Soonest and Newest Listed. These two things exploit my mantra very, very well. First of all, let's look at Ending Soonest. Search camera, and then we change the auction to Ending Soonest. This is where the adrenaline kicks in because suddenly you see all these cameras flash up in front of you that have got like one minute left on the auction. Should you buy it, should you not? This could be something that hasn't got enough information in the listing or something that maybe other people aren't interested in, but you are. If you see something ending soonest, you might be able to get yourself a bargain. If you're bidding, you always want to bid in the final moments, and I mean like the last 30 seconds of an auction. Don't be one of these people that starts the bid a week ago, because all you're doing is ramping up the price for everyone else, and you'll probably get sniped at the end by me. On the opposite end of this spectrum, newly listed. This you need to filter by buy it now as well, because if you only look at the auctions, they've still got like 
10 days to go, so you can't buy them anyway. If you look at newly listed and buy it now, what you get here is the perfect storm of a lack of patience, a lack of knowledge, and you're gonna be the first eyeballs to see these things. They just want a quick sale and it's in your best interest to see it first. So if you start searching by recommended or best match, you're not gonna see the newest listed items because eBay likes to be evil and make sellers pay to promote their posts. So the newly listed ones are always right at the bottom. So if you're lucky enough to see a brand new listing and someone's completely got the price wrong, that's where bargains occur. And just so you know, I'm not making this up. This is a real world example. I was playing a game of newly listed and I found this lot of small rig equipment. So you've got your handles, your cages, etc. And it was on for a really good price. And because it was newly listed and there was an offer function available, I thought I would push my luck and I put an offer in, I think for like 80 pounds. One of the handles would have gone for 90 pounds. The cages go for about 100 pounds. There was so much stuff in this lot where you could tell that the buyer just didn't have patience. They could have individually listed it. They couldn't be bothered. Let's just get rid. So I put an offer in. It got declined and then within the hour it immediately sold. So someone that had a little bit more risk tolerance than me went in, saw that it was listed stupidly low and immediately bought it. So enough about auctions, there's plenty more ways to get bargains online. Let's look at electronics buyers and sellers. So companies like CEX in the UK or MPB if it's worldwide, not sponsored. And I think there's a new one in America called Gear Focus, which sounds like quite a similar setup. These are companies that will sell used camera equipment, buy used camera equipment, and they have their own internal systems that set the price. My main sort of hack for these sorts of sites is to just allow yourself to be a bit more flexible with the condition of the items. For instance, I got a pristine Olympus EM5 for an absolute steal because I was willing to look for a good option rather than an excellent option. And it was pristine for every reason except the plastic eyepiece had sort of pinged off and someone had lost it. It was two pounds to replace. So I got a massive discount on the camera just by taking the time and having the patience to replace that one piece of, you know, camera. The good thing about good is as, le as long as it's not spares or repairs, you will still get your six months warranty. So that means the camera is still in perfect working order. So you can get loads and loads of bargains this way. And also I think I'm in the minority here again, but if something does have a little bit of cosmetic damage on it, like, you know, the, the front of this has seen better days, you know, it came out in 2014. Of course it's seen better days. I think it adds to the charm. I do. But then I am someone who spray paints cameras, so probably don't listen to me. A top tip for MPB, again, not sponsored, is if you are open-minded about the cameras that you wanna buy, you can go to the camera section in the menu, click cameras, and then search low to high. All of these things are in different conditions, but you can, if you have the patience, really find some bargains this way. Which leads me on to spares and repairs. I recently did a video about my GH2 purchase, which was done in this way. I found it for 27 pounds and it was pristine in all other areas, but did not turn on. This is quite a high risk, high reward sort of situation that I do not recommend, but just for example's sake. Say you are a camera nerd and you know, due to spending lots of times in forums, that there is a simple fix to this issue. And that is that third party batteries just make the GH2 go crazy. And if you had an official battery that you could replace it with, you could potentially get a working camera. Not saying every dead GH2 on the market has this issue. I just knew that this listing said third party battery and I, you know, something ticked in my lizard brain and I thought I'd give it a punt and it worked. If you have the patience and are willing to learn the knowledge, there are so many things online that have very quick fixes. For example, I am definitely beginning to sound like a crazy cat lady energy book for cameras. <laughs> it is what it is. For example, this is an Instax Wide 300. These go for like 120 quid. I bought this one used and broken. It was on spares and repairs. I know due to being a camera nerd that there is usually a relatively quick fix. If this turns on and goes Meh, all you need to do is go inside and knock the lens back in onto its tracks because they're not the best built things in the world. I took a punt on it and it worked and I'm gonna sell that on for a little bit of profit. 
So that is very risky, you know, don't jump in and bulk buy a load of things if you don't know what you're doing. Do your research, have patience. It's not my fault if it goes wrong. <laughs> so let's talk about the real world. Because bargains happen in the real world too, guys, not just online. In fact, there's so many places like thrift stores, charity shops, markets, where lack of patience and lack of knowledge will collide. I've got so many bargains in the real world. One of my favorite places in the Northwest of England is bygone times. This is what it looks like. It's like four warehouses of joy. <laughs> you, you might find an antique rocking chair in this market and then the next one, it's a load of cameras. And then the next one, it's a load of creepy Victorian dolls. You never know what you're gonna get. And it's always a load of fun. Now, sometimes you'll find cameras in there where people have done a quick Google and the prices are much too competitive for my liking. But sometimes you do find bargains. I found my Helios lenses. I did a recent video on my favorite vintage lenses, which is on my channel. I found two Helios lenses in a janky little leather bag for $19.95. So sometimes people just go, oh, it's, it's a lens, uh, lens. Can't be bothered figuring out what it is. $19.95, done. Let's talk about unregulated private sales. Now I'm talking about Facebook Marketplace, I'm talking about Gumtree, I'm talking about Craigslist. This is the wild, wild west. Yes, you will have a lot of people with no knowledge and a lot of people with no patience and you will find bargains. You will also find scammers, time wasters and a lot of hassle. I think of everything on this list, that one is where you're most likely to run into trouble. Again, hashtag not sponsored, but I've been importing cameras from a company called Baye, and I got two cameras as an experiment. I thought I'd do some relatively low ticket items and see how it went before I spoke about it on the channel. And I have mixed reviews. I bought two cameras before Christmas from Japan. So Baye is like a, an intermediary between here and Japan, and they will take it from the seller, sort the customs out in theory, and then post it on to you. So in theory, you should get fewer customs charges, everything will be up and above board, and you've got a professional middleman to get the stuff from Japan to wherever you live. And the prices are really good. I just want to say the prices are very, very silly. I got this hideous GH1 in gold. The gold one is quite hard to find in the UK. If you do find one in the UK, it's usually already been imported and it's like 400 quid. I definitely screenshotted the price, I'll put it on screen. Great. The second thing that I bought is this pink, also hideous, <laughs> GF7. Very similar to a GX800, but I wanted it in pink. And I also got that for a very good price. Also a color that's very hard to find anywhere else but Japan. The first thing to consider when you are importing, make sure that the camera you buy can be converted to English. The second thing to consider is custom charges and also the time that it takes. Like I say, I got these before Christmas and they did take over a month to arrive. The first one arrived without any hiccups. I got it in a lovely little box and it came with like a microfiber cloth and a lovely little note from the seller. Wonderful. Japanese sellers are literally the best. They're so cute. I got my GM1 and it came with um, a little handmade paper crane in the box, for instance. Anyway, I digress. The second one came through with a £40 custom charge. If this was something that you could buy in the UK for 40 quid more, I'd be livid because that negates the whole faff. But because it is a custom colour, I decided to take the customs charge, take the hit and keep the camera. Buy E, you can find bargains. You can get on what's the equivalent of Japanese eBay over there and you can import them, but just be aware that sometimes you will still get stiffed with customs charges. So those are my favorite bargain hunting tips. If you found this helpful at all, please let me know. I know it's quite a nerdy subject. If you have any bargain hunting tips or tell me your best bargain ever, I would love to know in the comments. And just remember, be patient, be knowledgeable and be vigilant. Don't fall for scammers, use common sense and good luck bargain hunting. And watch this video next where I do go into my £27 bargain for the GH2. It's one of my favourite videos ever.